Hello everyone and welcome to the TCG News Report from September 19th to the 24th of 2023. Just want to be able to do some TCG News recap every now and then. This might be a weekly show that we can do to recap all the big TCG news across all the big games. And this week we have got a big one of magic news. We've got Lost Caverns of Ixalan, new Lord of the Rings cards, Ravnica Remastered, and a massive secret layer fall super drop. The Lost Caverns of Ixalan. We've got a few cards to show off here, some flip cards. Uh, namely Huatli being our main card here. Uh, uh, for those who are not as familiar, the Magic Planeswalkers all lost their sparks, so they are now all creatures. Uh, Huatli here is a 2-3 three for 3. When she enters the battlefield, you search your library for a basic land, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Then, two turns later, you flip Huatli over to her other side, only as a sorcery. On the other side, uh, this is a Saga. You make two 3-3 three, three dinosaurs. Then, all of your dinosaurs get have to add mana. Then, you search your library for a dinosaur, put it in your hand, then, assumedly, cast the dinosaur that turn so that on the next turn all of your dinosaurs gain trample and double strike and you probably win the game. This is a very cool card to support dinosaurs in standard as well as a cool new commander for dinosaur decks in magic as well. This set is releasing on October 20th with the pre-release being a weekend before that so keep an eye out there. We've got a few more Ixalan cards to go over. We've got the suite of basic lands which looks very very cool. I like these symbols for the lands very well. Little Incan Mayan inspired uh, art of the basic land symbols that we've come to know and love. And some more cards, some just showing off some of the frames. We've got Breach's Eager Pillager with his little showcase border right here. He is a 3-3 three, three for 3 with First Strike. Whenever any pirate you control attacks, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Create a treasure, target creature can't block, and exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. This is a very cool ability. Uh, if you swing with three guys, you get to pick all of these, make a treasure to cast the card, and somebody can't block you. So we get his little showcase art here. Then we've got the Skullspore Nexus. Eight mana or legendary artifact that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control, just the biggest guy, not the total. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control dies, create a green fungus dinosaur creature token with base power and toughness equal to the total power of those creatures. So this is very cool. If you get board wiped, you make your board one miss big ass dude. If one or two of your guys die, they come back as uh, effectless tokens. And you can pay two mana and tap this to double target creature's power until end of turn. Very useful on bait trample dudes, especially in mono green. And we see the showcase art for this artifact. This is the, I believe this is a borderless art, not the actual showcase. The showcase frame for the set is going to look like this, whereas the borderless will uh, give them a, a kind of Mayan Incan art, similar to the Ixalan style. Next up, we've got Osier Oxenil, Deepest Might, a god. 4-4 uh, for four, four, 4 with Trample. The red source you control will deal the amount of non-combat damage less than Osier's power to an opponent. That source deals damage equal to Osier's power instead. And when he dies, he turns flipped. Uh, which this is a very cool ability. Uh, you definitely, if you're building around this in mono red, this feels like a very big mono red uh, win condition in both standard or pioneer as well as commander. Uh, you want to buff up his attack as much as possible and then do a bunch of tiny little pings like tap deal one damage to an opponent to make it deal like seven damage and just kill them into the sun. Uh, this looks like a very cool like maybe turn five, turn six uh, mono red combo deck, which looks really interesting. Uh, and then when it dies, it flips into a land that taps to add red, and you can pay three mana to flip it back. But only if you deal four or more non-combat damage this turn, and only as a sorcery. Which makes him really, really hard to kill. You do have to exile him, because otherwise he turns into a land, and then can just turn back. Which is a really cool idea. Uh, hopefully we see more gods uh, with this similar style, where when they die, they turn into their land, and then you can flip them back. Uh, this is currently the only land that we have, flip land that we have from Ixalan, and Ixalan is known for its cards flipping into lands. So I expect this to be a cycle, uh, though uh, we don't have any of the other ones just yet, and this is a very cool way to do this cycle. We can see the showcase art for our god right here. Uh, a little reminiscent of the March Machine coin showcase, but I think this is a little bit cooler. Uh, but I do, personally, I do like the coin showcase. I know the minority for that though uh, and this is the back for the showcase art of temple of power next up we've got galta stampede tyrant new galta is an 8 8 uh, or 12 12 for 8 mana with trample when galta enters the battlefield put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield i think this card is not going to see much play in standard potentially see some play in like older formats like pioneer or modern where you can cheat it out uh with stuff like show and tell to then vomit your entire hand uh, but I think I'd be really, really excited for this card in Commander. Uh, check out Pleasant Kenobi's video on Galta Stampede Tyrant. It's like a 10-minute video all on this card. There is some cool shit you can do with this card. And if I can help it for our look ahead here on the channel, I will be incorporating this and a lot of those combos into my deck. Because I like playing big green fatties. 
Moving on here, we've got a very important reprint, Cavern of Souls. Yes, Cavern of Souls is coming to standard. And we get the six neon ink prints that we first saw in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. We are getting it here as well in Ixalan. And so, yeah, well, for those who don't know, Cavern of Souls is a land. When it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. You add it a colorless or you add a colored mana only for the color only for the creature type that you have chosen, but the spell that you're casting can't be countered. That's the big part. Uh, this seems a little scary to be printing it in the standard right now, but currently, as far as my understanding, control is not a very large part of the metagame, which means that control is just kind of at least counter spell control is very, very hard to play right now. Um, with, especially with Cavern of Souls coming into the meta. Ixalan is known for supporting creature types, though this set has been confirmed that it is not going to be a typal set similar to the last time we went to Ixalan, though we are going to get a lot of dinosaurs, some vampires, some humans, and some pirates, just because that's how Ixalan works. But there's not going to be as much of a typal support for them like all your vampires get plus this, or all your dinosaurs get plus this, like there was in the first set. But Cavern of Souls as a reprint is very cool. We'll drop the price uh, for normal versions of Cavern of Souls. We also get the Treasure Trove Box Toppers and Special Guests. So this is our Treasure Trove Box Topper, one of our uh, examples here. Uh, all of the Box Toppers for Ixalan will be from this Treasure Trove series, uh, which is uh, Commander Legal, but I believe not Standard Legal. Uh, as you can see, this has a Will of the Council uh, voting shenanigans, a four mana artifact, the beginning of your upkeep, starting with you. Each player votes for Carnage or Homage. Each if Carnage gets more votes, sacrifice this and destroy all non-land permits. If Homage gets more votes, draw a card, uh, which is very cool. Uh, it's kind of a sitting board wipe that just sits there every single turn and convinces your opponents to let you draw more cards unless everybody wants to blow the board up. We've also got Lord of Atlantis and Mana Crypt. These are cards that we have seen already before in Magic. And these are the special guest slot. Uh, think of these similar to list slots, but more curated and with special artwork and more fu actual functional reprints than list are. These are not going into standard. These are very similar to uh, the list reprints where they're not being included in standard they're, or they're not being added to any formats. They're just cool functional reprints uh, for the new cards, uh, for old cards that maybe uh, need some love. Uh, and this Lord of Atlantis look art is very cool. And Mana Crypt, maybe me and my fellow budget Magic Commander players will be able to pick up some Mana Crypts. And because just like the Cavern of Souls, Mana Crypt is also getting the Neon Ink treatment with your five uh, colored Neon Inks and then the special kind of rainbow Neon Ink. Uh, those who want to keep their mana crypts expensive can go for these in their commander decks, but those of us who want to be able to afford it can buy the normal version, which is very cool. We also get some Jurassic World cards. There is 26 total Jurassic World cards coming in this set. This works very similar to how the Transformers worked in Brothers War, where they are not in every pack. Uh, they will show up in the back of your pack, and uh, they are not included in standard. They have a completely new set symbol. Uh, they're commander only, legacy only. Uh, so these will be very cool for commander players, uh, for people who love crossovers. Uh, this is, this is going to be very cool. Like I know Jordan really likes crossovers. We only have three cards spoiled so far. These two are the same card. This is a flip card. Um, but uh, yeah, so we are going to be seeing a lot more Jurassic World cards in the future. Going over them here, we've got Welcome To, which obviously then turns into Jurassic Park. Three mana saga. For each opponent, up to one target non-artifact creature they control becomes a wall with Defender for as long as you control the saga. Very funny, especially in car in decks like Tom Bombadil, where you can keep looping this and you can just turn all of your opponent's non-creature artifacts into walls. So you just turn all their mana rocks into walls, which is very funny. Uh, create a 3-3 dinosaur with trample against haste. That's very cool. And then destroy all walls and exile the saga. So unless they can pop the saga before this gets off, all of their non-creature artifacts that you turn into walls are going to die. And then it turns into Jurassic Park, which is a land. Each dinosaur in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to cards of mana value, plus exiling three other cards from your graveyard. And eight Gaia Cradles for dinosaurs, which is very cool. Uh, this flavor on this card is very, 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 very nice. I like this a lot. Uh, all your dinosaurs gain escape so that they can then escape the Jurassic Park. This is very fun. Uh, it's also very strong. Any dinosaur deck is going to be playing this card. Then we've got Ian Malcolm Chaotician, a 3 mana 2 2. Whenever a player draws their second card each turn, that player exiles the top card of their library. During each player's turn, that, may ca that player may cast a spell from among the cards they don't own, exiled with Ian Malcolm Chaotician, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. Which means that during each player's turn, if you draw a second card, you exile the top card of your deck, then an opponent can cast your cards. The opponents cannot cast their own cards. You cannot cast your, uh, your own cards. You can cast your opponent cards. This card is very, very 
very weird. Then we've got Indominus Rex Alpha with a very interesting commander cost here. We got five mana split across three colors for a 6-6. When it enters the battlefield, sorry, as it enters the battlefield, discard any number of creatures. It enters with a flying counter on it if a card was discarded with flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Haste, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. So it gets a bunch of uh, keyword counters depending on what you discard from your hand when you cast it. Uh, and then when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each counter on it. So you fully replenish your hand, which is nice so that this thing is a very, very powerful commander because when you play it, you're going to discard your hand. It's going to enter with a bunch of abilities. Hopefully one of them is haste, so you can start smacking right away. Then if it dies, you've already drawn a new hand, so you just play back to the command zone, discard them all again, give it a bunch more keywords. Uh, this card looks very, very cool. I like this card a lot, and I'm very excited to see the new Jurassic World cards as we get them spoiled. Again, this is only three cards. We've got 23 more to go. And this is the Lost Caverns of Ixalan product suite. We've got our draft boosters, set boosters, collector boosters, bundles, a gift holiday bundle because this is coming out near Christmas. So this is going to be our Christmas set. Uh, we've got our pre-release boxes and four commander decks, which is very cool. We've got a pirates deck and a merfolk deck, dinosaur deck, and a uh, vampire deck. So this is very cool. Supporting the four original archetypes of magic. Uh, all of this product art looks very cool, very thematic. I like the little pink uh, strip on it. it. looks very cool. Uh, I wouldn't have s associated pink with Ixalan, but now that I've seen it, I can't unassociate it. Uh, a lot of this product looks very, very cool. I like this a lot. Moving on to Lord of the Rings, their holiday release comes November 30th, and we get some we get a new WPN promo here with rampant growth, uh, with our friend Sam on the card and a big ass tree. Search your library for basic land, put that on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Uh, all of your local game stores should be getting plenty of these. If my understanding is that they're getting a lot, uh, so keep an eye out for your set of a rampant growth. Uh, it should be part of either some Lord of the Rings holiday event that they're doing, or just whatever normal Friday night release that they're doing. Uh, should be able to get these to you, so keep an eye out for those. Then we've got the Brothers Hildebrand cards. These are all Commander Lord of the Rings cards that are reprint cards using some Lord of the Rings art uh, from the Brothers Hildebrand. You can see they get the artist cred with Greg and Tim Hildebrand down there on the bottom of the cards. We get Explore, Second Harvest, Myriad Landscape, and Souls Attendant. This is very funny. I like my Soul Sisters in my decks, and so I'll probably be picking up some of these for my decks. And we've got some scroll arts. These are going to be showcases for the original cards from the original Lord of the Rings set, uh, just with this cool little scroll art on it. Do a little showcasing of the cool new art for these cards. Then we've got some poster cards. These have been kind of notorious for being very hard to read. Uh, so we've got Sauron, the Dark Lord. These are cards are all cards that already exist. Uh, Aragorn, the Uniter. I already know what this thing does. I've got my ass kicked by this thing enough times that I don't need to be able to read it. But this is actually one of the more readable ones, which is funny because it's probably the most playable one. Uh, then we've got Gandalf the White over here, uh, whose text is very difficult to decipher if you are new to magic. Uh, and since this is Lord of the Rings, most people here are going to be, who are picking these up, are going to be fairly new to magic. This guy's mana cost is in every corner of his card, which is a little weird. Uh, but if you are already in magic, this is very easy to, like, you can look up these cards. You probably know what most of them do. They're very cool. Uh, you might be able to actually decipher what the card is telling you to do, with the exception of something like this Gandalf or the Galadriel, I believe, is also kind of whack. Um, but these are very, very cool cards. Uh, I like the art on them. Next up, we've got Ravnica Remastered. This is an entire remastered set, similar to Dominary Remastered, so all of these cards we're going to have already seen, but most of them are going to be getting cool new borders, cool watermarks, getting some old border uh, Shocklands, getting some new art for Shocklands, getting some fun reprints, old border Massacre Girl, borderless Massacre Girl looks very cool, getting some uh, confirmed uh, guild alignments for some car cards. I mean, we knew where Nymph is in Aurelia set, but now Atomic is confirmed to be Azorius. Uh, getting a full reprint suite of every single one of the Shocklands, uh, in both normal art and borderless uh, and retro frame, as we'll see in a little bit. Uh, here is just some more of the borderless arts. We've got Tomic, who looks very, very cool in his little uh, weeb-ass anime-looking outfit. Uh, we got a very cool new Birds of Paradise, Fibble with the Lost, and a very cool little comic book art style. Looks like even his art style is lost, which is very cool. If that's the intentional meta joke, then I like it very much. Uh, and then Krenko Mob Boss. Uh, these are the anime style arts for these guys. Uh, these will be showing up in the packs, similar to how they have been in previous sets, uh, especially the other remastered sets. And we're getting the full suite of Shocklands in Borderless as well, which is very cool. Then we've got our Mystery Booster Festival in a box. The uh, Magic Con... 2023, the 30th anniversary MagicCon event was over the last weekend, and this is the Festival in a Box bundle that you can get on the Wizard site right now. They You get a Mox Tantalite, Mox Opal, Relentless Rats, this is not foil, but this is very cool art rock for Relentless Rats, and a Soul Ring, and then you get a Chaos Draft 24 pack of boosters to Chaos Draft with your friends, plus a full box of Mystery Booster Convention Edition, which is very cool. You can pull your Sliv Drazi Monstrosities and your Niv-Mizzet Sliver-Mizzets out of this thing, which is very cool. 
Then we've got Ponies the Galloping kicking off into our secret layers. This is something that uh, Magic did, I think, four or five years ago at this point uh, with their Second Life charity auction. Uh, you can go onto the site and buy the secret layer that is these four cards. All proceeds go to Second Life, a cool charity. And uh, these cards are very fun because we had the other four ponies that said if you control all eight ponies, you every pony wins the game. But these four ponies didn't exist. Uh, there was weird ways you could get around to get them on the board, but now they actually exist. So pony players rejoice. We've got Applejack, who's a 4-4 four, for four, 4. At the beginning of your end step, put a toy you own onto the battlefield as a 2-2 two, two, with that toy's name, color, and creature type. If the toy has wings, the token has flying. If the to toy has a horn, Scry to. If has neither, create a food token. Very fun effect, being able to just pull up a backpack of toys, pull up a backpack of Legos, Funko Pops, anything, and just put them onto the battlefield as little toys. These are all silver bordered. They're all their effects are going to be similar to this. Uh, Fluttershy is a 0 4 for 3 with Defender and Flying. Put a 1 1 counter on each creature with a tail, target player controls. Stare down up to one turn creature until end of turn. As long as you are looking at it, it cannot attack or block. I would rule that if you break eye contact with this thing, that it can then start doing that. Uh, but this is very cool. Obviously, it's going to buff your ponies. But if you can find other cool arts with tails on them, then you can put one one counters on those as well. And technically, she works for Ally, for uh, like your other players too. Then we've got Pinkie Pie, a 2-2 two, two for 2. Whenever you cast a spell with a smile in its art, create a tap treasure token, and your party consists of each creature you control, and your party is always full. These two abilities seem fairly innocuous, but this is probably one of the stronger of these ponies. This card is very good. There's lots of cards that... Uh, quote unquote, have a smile in their art uh, when they're like scheming menacingly. And it's very funny to think of what Pinkie Pie is rolling around with, who has uh, having a smile to make treasure tokens. And then also your party consisting of every creature you control. Party was not necessarily balanced around this. Party was balanced around you having four cards. Most party cards don't get you many more benefits if you only have four guys in your thing. But there's some that if you have 35 creatures in your party, we do the game on the spot. So this card is very, very strong. Uh, and Rainbow Dash, the going to be the dedicated commander because he's got the five colors in their uh, mana cost here, which allows him to be a five color commander. A two, two for three with flying and haste. Whenever a creature you control with flying and or haste attacks, you get 20% cooler. You start at 0% coolness. And you can tap if you're at least 100% cool, add five colors of mana, draw a card, and reset your coolness. Uh, this looks very, very cool. I'm very excited about these ponies. Uh, this it's, it's fun that they completed the cycle of the ponies from the few years ago, and now we can actually have every pony win the game. Then moving into our secret layer, massive drop. We've got absolute annihilation with oppression, abrade, mass hysteria, and terminate in all caps, and some very badass red, white, and black color art here. Uh, the terminate looks a little bit out of place actually with the gold border, uh, whereas like this is a black card, this is a red card, so these like kind of fit in. Also, funny thing, all of the flavor text is also in all caps, uh, as well as obviously the, the effect text. Uh, this is a very cool uh, heavy metal. Uh, secret layer drop that we're going to see a few more of in a bit as well now on vhs the, if i were to buy any i'm not a big secret layer guy but if i were to buy any this is really really cool uh the rewind art on this is very cool food chain is incredibly playable so is rampant growth and the first liver in sliver decks um these cards are all very cool uh they have fun little like enchantment three dollars sorcery three day rental seven seven this stuff is for 50 cent charge of tape not found rewound right this is fun uh i like this stuff uh this is very very cool little uh now on vhs secret layer drop and we've got Magic the Baseballing. Uh, these cards have uh, back to them. The front of the card has no effect text on it. They are just the original Lorwyn 5 Planeswalkers uh, with their little where they would play on the baseball field. Uh, their name, their loyalty, and their mana cost. And then on the back of the card is where all the text is. Uh, it's where all their abilities are, technically where their starting loyalty is. But it's like also on the front as well as the mana cost, which is also on the front. Uh, they also have... Uh, a little blurb about them and then like a little fun fact. Uh, these cards are very cool. I don't know if you're going to be playing them on the front side or the back side in a sleeve. The front side is obviously way cooler, but the back side is where all the effect text is. So like these are iconic planeswalkers, but like also I don't have them all memorized. Uh, keep partying hard, shredding harder than you thought previously thought possible. This is a very cool, another heavy metal secret layer here. We've got Tevish Sot, the Godo, uh, Warlord, Infinite Warlord, Goto Guy. Uh, we've got Jessica, Thrice Reborn, the cool Planeswalker with Partner, and Vile Smasher the Fierce, also with Partner, which is cool. These cards all look very cool. Mostly, all of these are fairly playable as well. Goto is an, uh, always going to be a CDH staple deck because it just wins the game as soon as you play it. Uh, Jessica is very, very powerful. Vile Smasher is incredibly good, especially in like the big mana decks. And Tavish Thought is like one of the better Partner Planeswalkers that we got out of uh, this set as well. Uh, so this, these are all very exciting reprints. Uh, very, very cool art on all these cards. I like the Secret Lair a lot. 
Then we've got a artist layer for a bunch of lands. Uh, the lands secret layers are always interesting because they are thirty dollars for five lands. But these these art is very very cool. Uh, personally, I would wait to try and pick these up on the secondary market uh, because their prices don't tend to hold very well because they are lands. But they might. You never know. If some of the lands are just like pop offs, really cool art. And if anything is going to be pop off, really cool art, these are probably going to be in there. I really like these art styles. They're very cool, especially if you're playing some Wilds of Eldraine decks. I think these fit in very well in the Wilds of Eldraine theming. And we've got Buggin' Out. We've got Eldritch Evolution, Giant Amberphage, Noxious Revival, Gris the Hungering Tithe, and I some Death Priest guy. Uh, don't actually fully read this name, uh, but it's some bug dude. Uh, most of these cards are not incredible. Eldritch Revolution sees a lot of play. Noxious Revival is pretty good. Gris is decent in Commander. Giant Amberphage doesn't really see a lot of play uh and then the death priest guy over here is decent i believe uh i know his effect um it, like it's not awful but it's not the best uh this is a very cool secret layer i like this art a lot if you are a fan of this art style like i am i want to think about picking this up though this doesn't have as many of the more playable cards that we would like to see out of a secret layer and we've got the artist series kev walker getting a lot of really playable cards here in this very cool kind of phyrexianized art here which is very cool um We've got like this kind of flavor text line going through all of them, which is neat. Uh, the art on all of these is very creepy, very cool. Uh, we got Faber Elder, which is a staple in five color decks. Carnage Tyrant, basically any mono green stompy deck, especially with the new dinosaur stuff coming out, is going to want to pick this up. Fleshbag Marauder is really good in any sacrificing deck or Death Matters deck. And If the Betrays is always a pain in the ass as soon as it hits the board. It's kind of a little pain in the ass to cast, but if you can put it on the board by slamming something like the new Galta, then this thing goes crazy. Then for Yu-Gi-Oh! news, we've got the Crimson King Structure deck uh, released last weekend, and these are all the new cards coming out of that deck, including the first human type confirmed, humans in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I think this technically has some weird implications on like calling a creature type and turning into something like that, but like most of the time this is never going to come up. I uh, got some cool new resonators. Uh, this is personally it's my favorite resonator, just on the theming. Uh, it's Carly's Dark Signer resonator, which is cool. Uh, this deck is interesting. It's not incredibly powerful. It's definitely not, nowhere near as impactful as even like the Trap Tricks deck was. Uh, but this deck is very cool. It shows off a lot of the cool Archfiend stuff uh, that uh, the Jack Atlas cards can do. Allows the deck to be a bit, a lot more consistent, as well as have some more power. Uh, unfortunately, the Red Dragon Archfiend deck tends to be a combat deck, and so like this card is kind of bad unless you're in combat this card searches fiendish chain which i'm not sure you really want to be playing the resonators are very cool the resonator and the bone archery card are all very good at allowing the deck to have some more consistency and some more power plays uh being able to slam out a bunch of synchros uh, a lot of the red dragon archery stuff do have like turn one options it's not necessarily as powerful as their turn two options to being able to blow up a board but it's still there uh it's a cool casual deck cool rogue deck if you want to pick it up always pick up three copies of each Yu-Gi-Oh structure deck because they only come with one copy of each card and you do want three copies of the good cards and and the zero copies of the bad cards. Uh, this is our Pokemon 151. All of these products on the left came out this weekend over on Friday. Hit up your local game stores or Walmarts and Targets to see if they have any left. This is a very, very popular set. There's a very cool uh, extended arts for all three of the original starters. Uh, the Bulbasaur line, the Charmander line, and the Squirtle line. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, this is the binder collection that comes with four packs and a binder with the Mew and all of the little Pokemon symbols on it. That's a very cool option. We've got the booster bundle, which just comes six packs. The cheapest option for just getting the most packs. We've got the Elite Trainer box, which has... Every Everything that mostly trainer boxes do however this one only comes with nine packs instead of the usual 10 which is a little weird admittedly uh but it comes with all your little trinkets and your little uh, box that you expect with the lead trainer box and the sleeves that have the snorlax on them and then the poster collection which has a big fold out poster so that you can track every single pokemon that you would want to catch uh of the 151 another cool thing about this set is that normally pokemon set numbers go by uh, type this one their set number is their pokedex entries so when you get the entire collection and put it into your binder that you got from the binder collection you see them in pokedex uh, order which is very cool i like that a lot it's a fun little flavor all these guys are releasing on october 2nd uh, there's a second wave of 151 including the ultra premium collection the alakazam box and the zapdos box that gets you the big zapdos ex and the big alakazam ex and then the ultra premium collection coming with the mew sleeves it's basically a super elite trainer box bunch of packs bunch of shit these will be hitting shelves october 2nd so in a few weeks keep an eye out for those and remember that these are coming then we've got Lorcana news. We've got a few more cards from Lorcana, not enough to warrant its own video, but we do have more Lorcana cards spoiled. A few, these are kind of trickled out throughout the week, so it doesn't look like they're giving us any more big drops like they did that one time. Uh, we got basically all these on separate days. First over here, 
We're gonna start over here. First, over here with bounce, we've got return chosen character of yours to your hand and return another chosen character to their player's hand. This is very cool. Uh, it's a two mana uninkable, which is a little annoying, but this is supporting the bounce deck that we have been seeing from purple uh, with Merlin. I don't think we have enough cards for this deck to really be viable yet, uh, but hopefully either we get some really big payoffs. I think we need more than just Merlin for the payoff for this deck. Um, but if we get more payoffs or more setup, then a self-bounce deck in green and purple could be very cool. Green and purple doesn't really have a super defined archetype right now. Uh, so this would be a very cool archetype to give them. And bounce is a very good card in that deck. Then we've got a one mana Flint Rider. This is basically just Green's Olaf. In case you're very scared of the fire of the cannons, you can throw in a Flint Rider. Uh, not very splashy, but cool nonetheless. Then we've got Cogsworth Shift 3, which floats perfectly onto this new Cogsworth, Cogsworth as a 2. So the curve here is very, very nice. A 2 vibe for 5 inkable. Always love when our shifts are inkable. Uh, it has Ward, which is very cool. Uh, quest for 2. And all your other characters gain Resist plus 1. Damage health to them is reduced by 1. This Resist mechanic is something that we saw from Steel, from the last few uh, cards that were released. And as we see on our Steel guy over here. So it's very interesting that Blue uh, Sapphire is getting Resist, but they're only giving it to other characters. They don't currently have any cards with Resist like actually printed on them which is an interesting way to kind of define how blue works they don't necessarily get all the keywords uh but they can give them to other people looking at the small cogs worth here we've got uh, your characters with reckless gain tap and gain one lore uh currently all the only reckless cards are in ruby uh which this card doesn't necessarily want to be played in ruby like it can be because a lot of your reckless cards are going to be attacking then you give them the resist so they can attack more that's kind of cool uh i don't think this effect is very useful right now we don't have a lot of reckless cards that are very good i would say then we've got a steel cinderella this is scary uh, so now we have a Steel Cinderella that our big Shift Cinderella can shift onto. Now, the curve is awful. This comes out on turn 2, that thing wants to shift on turn 5, so you do have to keep this thing alive as a 2-2 for a long time. But, if you can do that, this card is very good. Just the fact that it is named Cinderella and costs less than the shift value is very good. It means that the Cinderella package could be so solely played in Steel, which means that we might be able to get away from Amber into something like uh, Amethyst uh, Purple to be able to play our Songs deck. Uh, also, this card is your Simba. Uh, when you play this card, you may draw a card, then choose a discarded card. It's also 2-2 two, two for 2, so it's your second Simba. Uh, it's Inkable, which is nice, so that if you don't need this effect in the late game, if you only have one card, if you top deck it, you don't just mill a card. Also, this is the promo stamp uh, for the end of the month League event promos, so this card is going to be one of the end of the month League promos that we'll be getting for all of Set 2's release. This is very exciting news that we actually have one of these confirmed. That's very nice, because uh, this card is very cool, and I like this card, and I want to be able to get this card in promo version, which now we can, so that's nice. Next up, we've got the Prince. This card is very good. Out of all these cards spoiled, I think the Prince here is the best card on the board right now. It is a 3-mana inkable for a 1-3 that quests for 2 with Bodyguard. This is currently, as far as I'm aware, the only Bodyguard that quests for 2, which is very exciting. Because now your Bodyguards actually can do something. Uh, that's kind of one of the problems with Bodyguards, is that unless they have something to protect, they are kind of shit. But this guy... If he has nothing to protect, he just quests for two every turn, which is nice. He also has three health, which is very nice because he doesn't die to fire the cannons. And with, with this resist one, he doesn't die to smash either. Uh, this is very, very strong, especially in our uh, yellow steel decks, where you can go Lilo, then Simba, then the Prince. Uh, unless your opponent, like there are options to deal with the turn two Simba, all of those options die to the turn three Prince. This card is very strong. I like this card a lot. It is only an uncommon going again with Lorcana's brilliant design decision of printing powerful cards at common and uncommon. Uh, this is definitely one of the cards to look out for in your packs if you open this card, set it aside. Uh, it is a very powerful card. Keep an eye out for the Prince. Next up, we've got I'm Stuck, our little Pooh Bear here. Uh, chosen Exerted Character, can't ready at the start of their next turn. One mana inkable. Uh, this card's not great. Uh, if they're already exerted, then I can kind of just going to try and kill them. And then they can't exert anyways because they're dead. Or they can't ready because they're dead. So it's like half of Freeze. But Freeze is two mana and uninkable. This is one mana and inkable. But even Freeze is kind of bad. I don't think this card's great. It has its situations, but I think those situations are going to come up so infrequently that this card is going to be mana every single time, and you'd rather it be a more playable card in your deck. And that is the end of our TCG news today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed this kind of large TCG all trading card games wrap up, please let me know in the comments and we can keep doing this week to week. I'm very excited to keep up to date on all of the uh, TCG news, primarily Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and now adding more content to that. If there's any other games that you would like us to add to our list of recap, let me know. This video is a bit chunky because of the large amount of Magic announcements we got from the Magic Con 30. So these videos will probably Probably not be as long in the future but it's very nice to kick off the first video in the series with a big bang if you guys like this type of content if you want to see more in the future let us know by liking and subscribing on the video and we'll see you in the next video peace